Brian Delesky with Able Distributors. Today, we're having a little Filters 101, and it's really just about airflow with different filters. Now, you know I've had a couple videos out on total external static pressure, one on things that can affect static pressure, and then kind of sizing ductwork with a ductulator. Those links will be below, but today, we're all told that a fiberglass filter is better than anything else, especially if it's just a one inch, and if you have airflow issues. So what I did was I, last night I went into the showroom after we closed and I kinda wanted to see the difference between five different filters, fiberglass, fiberglass, poly, the pure later pleat, the filtrate 1000 series pleat, and then their, their best one, their $25 filtrate, oh well, best is in quotation marks, uh, filter and see what they do with static pressure. And all I did was put a gauge in the, the blower compartment, because that's all I wanted to know. I wanted to measure the amount of suction that we were getting with the different filters. Now again, the setup we have in the showroom, it's a Napoleon 97% furnace. It's just on a return box with just a little bit of ductwork sticking into the warehouse. There's really no ductwork, ductwork to it, but I thought it was still a good enough test to see what the differences were. So I had two pieces of equipment all uh, hooked up. I had an old Magna Helic on the right side of the furnace. And again, this was for two reasons. A, this is super easy for me to read. B, I wanted to see how close a Magna Helic is to a digital. So I also had the UEI 201B. I like this one a lot. So I had two measuring devices and I went through and I started with no filter. And again, the ductwork there is kind of restrictive. I only have a 12 inch rind coming off the return. It's a three ton drive furnace. So with no filter at all, I was at a 0.16. Now, as soon as I installed the fiberglass filter, and typically I used to tell people, hey, if you can read a, a headline through it, it's the right filter. If it cost about a buck, it's the right filter. So with a fiberglass filter installed, it jumped 0.1 to 0.27. So that's about what a fiberglass filter should, should do. So the next up is this poly. A lot of guys think that this is a fiberglass, but it's actually like a poly. You can see, I don't know if you can see through it. It's a little bit more dense. And all these filters are 16 by 25 size, just to, just to let you know. So when I put the poly in, it jumped all the way up to 0.39. So every step, we're, we're gaining restriction on that system. Then I went to um, a pure later pleat. Again, it's 16 by 25. Uh, it's just a pleated filter, a nice filter. That one brought it all the way up to 0.5. So I was kind of shocked at that jump, but every single filter we're going with a 0.5 uh, or, or a jump. Then we went with the filtreat Series 1000. Now they're series, I don't know exactly what the numbers mean. I think it's the particles that they, they, they catch. Um, we don't sell these. This is, I went to Ace Hardware and picked up a couple filters just for this test. So this is just another pleat. It's a filtrate. That one jumped all the way up to 0.6. Again, this is just having the fan on high speed, AC speed, swapping out the filters. The last one, was the filtrate the 1900 series. So this one, you can see the pleats are really, really close together. It's really a, a dense filter. Um, and this one brought it up all the way to a 0.63. Now, when you think about the entire external static pressure on most furnaces, it's supposed to be a 0.50. To have this bring it all the way up from 1.6 to a 6.3, you darn near got your 0.50 with just a filter change. So to me, the big news here is it, it went the way we expected to. Um, there was no surprises there. But honestly, if you walk into a home and you're having airflow issues, the farther rooms or the ones with the most turns, you got those airflow issues. It can be a lot of things. Again, I've covered that it could be the type of floor register, and I'm going to do a, a little bit of test on that. Could be a dirty A-coil, could be a dirty blower, could be the ductwork, but 
I got to tell you, if you take out one of these and you put in one of these, you could fix the problem right there. I mean, it's that simple. So again, uh, get yourself some pieces of equipment. I'd, and I, I, I know this wasn't that scientific because again, it's on a display piece in the showroom. It doesn't have a lot of ductwork connected to it. But I was still kind of shocked at how resistant that filter was. Now, I'm assuming most homeowners go into a big box store or an Ace Hardware. They're looking at all the filters and they want to do their job right. So they pass up the one for $1.12 and they go to the one for $24.99 is what I, I paid for this just for this video. I, I mean, literally, I'm going to throw that out and... Uh, so it was a little bit of a waste of money for the video, but let's really look at things. When you go into a house and you are tripping on limit, some of these filters say they're good for three months. We know that's just not the case. The limit switch on these new furnaces, some of them are just micro little switches. They're just not meant to be tripped on every single day. Either the furnace is going to throw a code, you're going to get be locked out, or eventually that little weak limit switch it's just going to fail and you're going to have to replace it. So that's it. Filters 101, Brian Dulesky, Able Distributors. Thank you.